Hey guys and gals, how are we doing? It's me, Joe Sayers, back here for the Music Factory Studios. Today I want to talk to you about something that is in both categories of things I cover here on my channel. Both open source software and operating systems, as well as music and music production. There has been an app that a lot of video editors seem to use on YouTube and other platforms such as that as their go-to audio editor. And it's always puzzled me anyway as to why they use Audacity instead of using something far more powerful and far more feature rich, such as Ardor. Ardor is probably the most popular DAW on the planet, actually, and most people don't even know it because there's so many programs based around Ardor. Waves Tracks Live is based on Ardor, as well as Harrison Mix Bus is based on Ardor. And a lot of the digital consoles that are out basically run our door on the in their internal setup. And it's shocking to me that people still use Audacity. And then when the news came out that Audacity has now become spyware, I for me personally, it's not that I, I hate to see Audacity go. But come on, man, this this program is not that great as far as its features the ability of things you can do with it and how powerful it is. It's great for a quick edit or something, but it shouldn't be the audio tool you're using. Our door can play back video and audio together at the same time. If you want it to do it, it's as simple as dragging your video track into our door and using it. So I wanted to cover this really quickly. Audacity, the open source audio editor that is really popular has now become spyware. One of the open source software's biggest strengths. Oh, this is from uh, Ground News Slash Gear. And uh, there's dozens of these articles out there on the net right now. And hundreds of videos about this from the open source and Linux and FreeBSD communities. Such as uh, DistroTube has talked about it. I know Mental Outlaw talked about it. And a couple of those guys that I watch here and there. Um, and this article says... One of the open source software's biggest strengths is naturally its openness, which brings other benefits like freedom of use, security, through scrutiny, flexibility, and more. And it goes on to talk about how the new company that has taken over, Audacity, is now basically phoning home and taking more information than it really needs to. Even if you, you know, I understand that some people want to find out what's working well for some people, and if they're, some people aren't having any good luck, you know, like, anonymous stuff like maybe you know what kind of processor you're using because cpu is really important in audio editing or something of that nature but it says as a desktop application with no core online functionality audacity never had to the need to phone home in the first place and that's true maybe if they ask you when it first opened up hey can we check out and see you know do you care or have a survey that says hey what cpu are you using or or you know what are your computer parts? Just so maybe they could get a better feel of, you know, how to write code toward those things or something. But it's strange how how much exploitation is coming out of Audacity. And there was a fork of Audacity, and I don't know if anybody knows this, but the Audacity alternative was abandoned after the developer was subjected to stalking and harassment. So a programmer who had forked Audacity has abandoned the project. It was now he known by the pseudonym Cookie Engineer. The developer published his Audacity alternative on GitHub earlier this week amid backlash against changes to the Audacity privacy policy. The new audio editor called Tenacity is built on top of Audacity source code and effectively rolls back the software to a build that pre preceded the controversial changes. I apologize for my voice. I've completely lost my voice this week from playing music and singing so much, so I'm really struggling with it. I apologize. However, to row over the name of the breakaway project appears to have spiraled out of control with members of the anonymous bulletin board 4chan reportedly turning up at the developer's home to express their disapproval. What? That's insane. It's it. What's insane that anybody would want to protect audacity in the first place. It's trash. As far as I mean, look, I know there's good people that have worked on it. But when you see what other options are out there, you're going to see how antiquated that software is. 
It's like Microsoft Office. Microsoft Office is the most antiquated office software on the planet. Once you try something like LibreOffice or even better things out there, you know, in in the in the world. But Audacity isn't that great of an audio editor. You know, I mean, they finally put in real time effects one at a time. What two years ago in Audacity? That's something that DAWs have been able to do since the late 1990s. So, after that, I'm going to show you that there are alternatives to Audacity that are full open source and they're in the repos of your operating system if you're running Linux. But here's the better part. If you're on Windows or Mac OS, our door has builds for you too as well. Our door is the Caden Live of the audio world. That's how good this software is. Okay? Our door is super feature rich. You can record, you can edit, and you can mix. All the buzzwords it says mute, solo, fader, automate, EQ, you can automate with it. It's something I don't I know Audacity really doesn't have automation in the in the traditional DAW automation sense or in the, the mixing console sense. So if you've got uh, someone who gets excited in a podcast, okay? You can go in there and individually turn down the single part where they get excited without having to cut or edit or anything. Just write the automation in for it to turn down at that point. That's all you have to do. Little simple things like that are what a lot of people have been missing. Stay away from Audacity. If it's spyware, stay away from it. Go pick up our door. Guarantee if you're on Arch, Ubuntu, um, any of the big names, F uh, Fedora or Red Hat or whatever you want to call it, uh, Susie Linux, uh, Mandrake, uh, even Gentoo, and th it's there. If you're on Mac OS, it's going to cost you a dollar a month. If you're on Windows, it's going to cost you a dollar a month because we don't have repos in the same way, and there are no builds directly in Homebrew for our, do our door. So... But you can demo it on Mac OS or Windows for free. Okay? It's, I mean, all they ask is for a dollar donation. That's not bad. Okay? I mean, that's great. So, basically what we have here is you can record, you can edit, and this has some really cool editing features. I mean, it's really cool. And if you want something that's proprietary but built on top of this, and the only thing that really Harrison did was they took our door... Harrison Mixbus. All Harrison did, Harrison Mixbus, is Harrison Mixbus went in there, and this works with Linux as well, is they went in and added the analog workflow to our door. So they basically took our door and just put their analog workflow on top of it. And it's pretty awesome. If you look at the features, are exactly the same on both of these, but the only difference is there are two versions of Mixbus. I'll cover this real quick. That way, some people know they may want this too. Um, Mixbus, and then there's Mixbus 32C. So we'll have, we'll do Mixbus 32C is a hundred bucks, and uh, regular Mixbus is eighty nine. But it goes on sale if you if you subscribe to their email list. It goes on sale for as low as like twenty nine dollars sometimes, and it's our door with an analog workflow. So to some people, it will be easier. Um, but 90% of the things you'll see here on the Harrison website apply to our door because it's literally the same DAW. So as you can see here, when you look at the channel strip here on the left, I'll pull it up here and I'll zoom in. Okay. Everything above this EQ here in the middle down to this red knob here is what Harrison added to our door that's it it's just a workflow thing so you get the harrison 32c eq which is the eq that michael jackson's thriller was recorded through the harrison console that is known as the harrison 32c and it was a a console that bruce swedeen liked to use and he used it on michael jackson's thriller and a bunch of records you've heard growing up or throughout your life and they basically put the 32c into a version of Mixbus. So there are two versions. There's the 32C version where you get the full 32C console. It has not only the EQ, but the routing, and it has a few more uh, sends and returns, and it has the tape saturation built in. Regular mi Mixbus is a little different, but 
it gives you the same workflow. So if you want the mix bus features without having to deal with the 32C, you want the more cut down version, there's that option. But we're going to talk about our door. But understand there are proprietary options out there. If you use our door and you'd say, you know what would really be nice if I didn't have to pull in these EQ plugins all the time and, and compressors and stuff. If I just had it all on the channel strip. Well, it's out there. It's called Mixbus and it works on Linux, Mac, and Windows. I'm not sure about FreeBSD, but my guess is if it works for Linux, I'm pretty sure it will probably work for FreeBSD as well. Now, let's talk about our door. Our door is good for audio engineers, musicians, and soundtrack editors. Sample accurate sync and share transport controls with video playback tools allow our door to provide a fast and natural environment for creating and editing soundtracks for film and projects. I know this is probably the most important reason people want to use this is to edit audio from either podcasts or edit audio from, you know, a, a video that they, they're making for YouTube or to do a, a, a voice dub over. This is going to be way easier because you don't have to line things up. It's just there on the screen itself. You got audio and MIDI capabilities plugins work audio units for mac os lv2 and linux vst and uh lad spa i'm not sure if that's actually a pseudonym or just a word for a linux style plugin uh, i've always said lad spa i don't know if that's correct or not those effects plugins work vsts work on windows and you know all kinds of midi processors and instruments you can find tons of stuff out there Transport and sync, external control surfaces. So if you want one of those, you know, like a um, a set of faders, MIDI control faders, you can do that. So they have sync MIDI time code. It can be synced with jack transport. I mean, it's just really powerful. I'm going to show you on Mac OS because I don't have a Linux machine near me right now. But basically, when you open our door, you will see this screen first that says choosing your default folder for sessions i always send my sessions to an external folder yes i misspelled extreme when i renamed this uh, sandisk uh, uh hard drive <laughs> but if i change the name of it it'll throw everything that i've told to save to there out of whack so i just left it so it's my sandisk x termy <laughs> it's meant to be extreme <laughs> i type too fast sometimes but I'm going to send it there, okay? Then we'll hit the forward button. And it's going to ask, while recording instruments or vocals, you probably want to listen to the signal as you record it. Yeah, everybody likes to hear themselves. So this is called monitoring. There are different ways to do this depending on the equipment you have and configuration of that equipment. The two most common are presented here. Please choose whichever is right for your setup. You can change this preference at any time in the preferences dialog. If you don't understand what this is about, just accept the default, which is ask our door to play the material back as it's being recorded. That way you hear what's coming through the DAW or through our door itself. The other option is if you have a zero latency set up with a, like a little small mixer or a mixing console, or you're using some software like the UAD console that I'm using here on Mac OS, but this applies to everything. I would recommend for everybody just to use Ask Our Door to play back the material because you can always mute the master out and use your other stuff if you want to later. Forward. Next thing is the monitor section. Use the master bus directly, which means you're going to hear the master output of our door. That's what you want to hear. You also have the option to use additional monitor buses. I don't, I've never had a setup and I've had multiple sets up with gigantic studio consoles and I've never wanted to use this option. Okay, so we're going to use use master bus directly. And our door is ready to use. I'm going to hit apply. I'm going to have an empty template. I'm going to save it as test. Okay, so now that we've configured our door to play back as we want it to, now we have to set up how core audio is going to, or I mean, how our door is going to get its audio on a Macintosh. It's going to get it from core audio. From Linux, it's either going to get it from ALSA or Jack, depending on which one you want to use. I can't remember what FreeBSD uses. I'm sorry. I apologize to anyone who's a FreeBSD user and, and watching this. But uh, you would choose your audio engine. That's basically what the audio system is. 
on Windows, you would choose ASIO, um, and that's what you would go with. Now, the input device and output device is very, very important. It needs to be your audio interface. It can't just be whatever. So it has to be specific. So you would pick, say, if you had, um, I use a, a, a Behringer X18 all the time for my Linux tutorials because it works with Linux. So I would choose my Behringer X18 as my input and output. If you're using, say, Focusrite Scarlet 2i2, you will choose the Focusrite Scarlet as your input and the Focusrite Scarlet as your output. Same goes for any audio interface you have, whether it's an RME Fireface or a Personas Quantum or whatever it is. Next is really important too, sample rate. So if your, if your audio in your video was recorded at 48K, which is usually the standard, or 44.1, you want to kind of match those up. So something you can use to find that out is media info. In on Mac OS, there's a great little app called Scoop that will tell you all about a file. So this file right here that I just have chosen is a two-channel WAV file and its sampling rate is 44.1 kilohertz. So if I was gonna bring this song, Hawk Run, into a session in our door, I would make my sample rate 44.1, okay? And most video editing software defaults, most screen recorders and things of that nature default to 48. That's just kind of the standard. So I see, and YouTube, prefers that you have 48k as your sample rate so if you're going to use that use 48k i'm going to be using 96 because my uad console is set to 96 and if i change it it could cause us more problems than than good <laughs> it may kill our door for a second but uh you can use an app called media info that does the same thing as scoop that you just saw and it's usually in the, uh, the linux repos and i'm sure it's in freebsd as well so I'm going to switch this to 96K. Now, buffer size really matters. This is how many samples of latency you're going to have when recording. So if you want to hear yourself while you're recording, you want a lower buffer size. 64 and 32 are may cause your machine to have all kinds of issues, especially if you're on an older CPU. I always suggest try 256 and see how it works. 256 is usually like the standard starting point and you you'll you can try 128 and 64 but you may get dropouts or what in the linux world is called as x runs and you don't want that you might have pops and clicks and things of that nature if you're monitoring yourself directly through your audio interface like with the little knob that lets you hear directly from the mic preamp or from the computer you could set this to anything if you don't need to hear yourself through the software okay so I'm going to set it to 512 because I'm using the UAD console, so I get no latency anyway. It doesn't matter to me if I set it at 248. But a good starting point is 256. It's showing me that over Thunderbolt, I'm going to have a total of 2.7 milliseconds latency. That's basically, you can't hear that. Most people don't hear latency till about 18 to 20 milliseconds. Some people are more sensitive to it than others, but 2.7 milliseconds is the same as standing what uh 30 inches away from a guitar amp i mean that's literally no latency so let's see what 512 shows me now i'm using a thunderbolt interface so it's going to be a little bit faster i figured it would be a little bit slower because i'm going through an, a, a thunderbolt dock and plugging my audio interface into that dock before it goes into the mac mini and then at 1024 i'm getting 10 milliseconds and at 248 i'm getting 21.3 so you kind of you know 512 will probably work if yours, if your audio interface shows more latency than what you're seeing here for me, don't worry. USB can be different. All audio interfaces are different. Also, at different sample rates, this number will change. The higher the sample rate, the lower the latency. The trade-off is your computer has to work harder, okay? So if you're going to record at 96, let's say, like I am, your computer is going to run way harder and your audio files are going to be twice as big. So that's why 44.1 and 48 are kind of the standards. At 44.1, I'm going to get 200, or I mean, I'm at 256 samples as my buffer size. And at 44.1 as my sample rate, 
I'm going to get double the latency, 5.8 milliseconds. At 48, it's going to be 5.3. At 88.2, it's going to be 2.9. At 96, it's going to be 2.7. I wouldn't go above 96 because it's kind of useless and the files get really crazy high, but you get 1.3 milliseconds of latency. Okay. We can have our input channels. I have two input channels on this interface and four output channels. I'm going to hit start and our door will open. Okay. Customize the session, master bus channels, and we will physical inputs to the master automatically to the master bus. So you want to connect your physical inputs to the master bus. Okay. And that way you can hear what's being recorded through our door. Okay. Now, there's our master bus. And the reason we chose two is because it's a stereo output, left and right. Now, I'm going to add a track up here in the top, or if you've got the menu that's down here, whether you're on Windows or Linux, if it's, you know, underneath and not in the top bar, it's under the track option. We're going to add a track, bus, or VCA. We're going to add a track. So we're going to add a track and we're going to bring this window is going to pop up and we're going to say we're going to add one track and we're going to call this microphone and we want our configuration to be mono input okay and the reason for that is if you choose stereo here okay it's only we're going to record you your voice on the left side okay record the mono tracks if you're recording a single microphone record it as a mono track when you export or render or whatever you want to call it when you finally get your final file out of our door it's going to be a stereo file and it's all going to be fine you're not going to have a mono file come out of our door you're going to have a stereo master come out of our door okay and that's all you have to do how many channels do you want you can choose audio midi tracks buses but just for the sake of doing video overdubs and video work all you need is a single input or maybe two for a podcast or three or four but you want those to be mono and then when it's all over and you render it you'll still get a stereo file so i'm going to add that and close if i arm the track you start to see this little red button arms the track it allows it to be recorded onto this track there are three windows in our door this is known as the editing window there is also the mixer window, as you can see, and it works the same way. The big red button here records into our door. That arms the track. And if you hover over anything, it'll basically give you a general overview of what it is. The big red button enable recording of this track. And if you look in the record window, the recorder window, I'm sorry, it will show you a overview up here in the top of all your channels that are recording. We have one here and the level that's coming into our door from that channel. Down here on the bottom, you will see your audio inputs and the waveform is it's actually coming through the software as we speak. So this allows you to see if you're clipping or too loud or too hot or whatever, and allows you to adjust on your audio interface. Looking at the waveform in the recorder window is a good idea to make sure you're not too hot. I could go in here and turn my mic preamp down and you will see the the waveform gets smaller or I could turn it back up and you will see it get hotter so I have control over that through this SSL channel strip here and basically if I turn myself down you see the waveform getting smaller and smaller as I turn myself down as I begin to turn myself up you see the waveform getting larger and larger so this gives you a good overview of how hot your signal is coming into our door that's, that's a great tool to have, okay? And that's an awesome thing to have work inside of our door. Yes, Universal Audio does work with our door. I started this tutorial a minute ago, and I had a few issues, but it was nothing. It was human error, not anything to do with Universal Audio. So, basically what we want to do here is we can arm our track. Here's the arm button for the track in the recorder window so i like to work me personally from the mixer window that's just me so if you're in the mixer window you can work from here 
A lot of people like to work from the editing window. That's probably where you'll spend most of your time is in this window here. So to record yourself, <coughs> excuse me, basically you're going to go up here to the top and there's a red button up here that looks just like the arm button. It's the record button. This is, and the way it's set up, it comes from old school tape machines. So you will push the record button, but it will not start recording. This is a fail safe mode and it'll start recording once you push the play button. That way the playhead moves. So now we're recording in our door and as you can see the waveform gets written directly on the screen as we're speaking. Now we have an easy way to record ourselves that doesn't involve spyware. How awesome is that? And then when you want to stop you can either hit stop or spacebar and it'll stop and we have our door and that is how you record yourself in our door now on this channel you have these little square boxes that allow you to just pull the fade in and fade out on these channels as you can see them here when you run your mouse over the audio that you just recorded there is a little box you can pull it to the left while clicking on your mouse and add a fade out or a fade in which is really handy okay you can also move your playhead and you can do all kinds of different little things here are your tools so you have your grab tool which allows you to grab it move it do whatever you want to with it as far as moving it around you have these other tools arrange tool you have the cut mode which will split regions that's what they call these audio uh, spots regions so you can just come in here with the scissor tool and cut it and then you know edit it this way so we'll cut that a little bit of silence out or if you cough or something you could cut the cough out so let's say we want to get rid of this silence here we will hit the scissor tool clip and then we'll clip it right there next to the audio waveform then we'll go back to our grab tool and we will click on this. We can backspace it away. We can also, if we go on the bottom of the waveform or on the end of the waveform, you will see this, what looks like a half of a square and two um, arrows. That will allow you to cut some of the audio out. So let's say you wanted to get rid of this last little line that you may have said and you're you may have coughed or said it funny and you just want to get rid of it. Well, you just pull it to there and you're done. Add your fade out and it's good. You're still in, in time with your video. Now, on OS X, I don't have any videos recorded at 96K. But all you have to do to, to see a video is literally just grab the video and drag it into our door. Once you've done that, you can go in here and there is the video monitor. The video monitor will line up. I would suggest bringing your video directly into our door before ever recording anything. Okay, bring it in first. And then you can open up the video window, the video monitor that will show you MIDI, uh, the, the, the time code. It'll also show you, you know, in full size. So if you record it at 1080p and you have a 1080p screen, you want to see the whole video as you're doing the voiceover. You can see it in its original size or a smaller letterbox. You can make it always be on top or full screen. Or you can resize it really easy just drag it in it'll treat it as any other track in our door so it will treat it just as if it were a audio track you'll see an audio waveform on the track and then when you choose the, the the video monitor it will show it to you when you're in the another thing i want to show you really quick in the mixer window see this blue button here that says fader you can put plug plugins before or after the fader. So I don't have any plugins installed in, on Mac OS for our door. But if you go in here, you will see a uh, a, an, a bunch of plugins that you have installed. One I, one option I can I can recommend for Linux users is the Calf Audio, C A L F, like Moo Cow, <laughs> or like Bull, Calf Audio. Calf Audio is, is some of the best effects I've ever heard. And they're open source and they're great. But if you're in the Arch user repository, there's all kinds of, of plugins. There's uh, dozens, if not hundreds, 
for Ubuntu. Um, if you're working on Ubuntu Studio, our door is already installed. Um, and all of the plugins that you could that are pretty much available for Linux. But you can go in here and add a uh, a plugin. Let's say you want to add um I don't know if it'll let me use these, but we'll try. Make sure if you record a mono source that you use a mono plugin, like a mono EQ. You don't want to use a stereo EQ. That's a waste of CPU power. It will use twice as much CPU power. Yes, I am on a um, demo of our door on OS 10 because I did not have a Linux machine set up to do this with at the moment. So we can bring in the ACQ, double click on it, and it'll show you the EQ. And you can play back the track while you're EQing. You don't have to like make adjustments and then push play and try to listen to it. You can play it, put it on repeat. Okay, put our door in repeat mode and it'll repeat the whole audio track and you can just EQ until you get it the way you want it. You know, changing it as we go along. I'm not going to play that back, what I said earlier, and EQ it. But it's real simple. Once it's here, it's you can play it back at the same time and hear it it's not going to let you hear it because of the, the uad console it may have let the screen recorder hear it i'm not sure but i didn't hear it um and you can do all of your eq work you can make the eq pre-fader so where i have it now if you put your plugins above the little blue bar that says fader that means it goes through the plugins first and then your fader is last if you put the EQ after the fader, the fader actually puts the volume into the EQ. I don't recommend you do that. Make it pre-fader. That way, the fader is your final output adjustment. Okay? So just try to be careful and not get your plugins after the fader. It could actually make it harder on you to figure out if you run into issues, what the issue is. But you can add an EQ. You can also add... Uh, there are compressors let's see we've got the um, there's compressors and gates if you know anything about those gates and expanders expanders are really handy for uh, getting rid of background noise i'm actually using one directly on the uad apollo i'm using this here this is the ssl channel strip and basically all an expander does is when you stop speaking you see this little green light it's basically muting my microphone when I'm not speaking. So you don't hear the background noise of the air conditioner. So if I turn it off, you'll hear the air conditioner, right? <clears throat> and the background noise of everything kind of going on in the room. But if I turn on the expander, you don't hear it. So that's a handy little tool to have if you've got, you know, people in the house while you're recording or, you know, uh, HVAC noise from air conditioners or heaters or you know uh, central air units or heat pumps or whatever and uh, they're a great tool to have there's also compressors so you can get your voice level and complete and when you're done with your session all you have to do is go into our door and look for the export button it's under session and we can export to an audio file you can also export to a video file isn't that cool that's handy, right? Okay, we're gonna export to an audio file and you can choose what kind of audio file you want. You can have WAV files, you can have MP3, you can also have additional formats. So if you want a WAV file and you also want say an MP3 and you can go in here and set those up to do them however you want them to. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to open the folder, okay? And I'm going to export this that we have. But I need to do one thing really quickly before I export. So I'm going to cancel this. I'm going to go into my arrange window, okay? My editor. And I need to have my start and end to make sure they're in the right spot. See these two little arrows that says start and end. Because if the end is over here, it's going to give you this file plus a bunch of silence. So we want to make sure, just make sure most of the time, the end point will always be at the last part of the audio you recorded. 
but it's good to make sure that you're in at the perfect point okay now we'll go back under sessions hit export export to audio file i'm going to open the folder so you see how it works and then i'm going to hit export and as you can see we're done and it gives us this awesome information okay it tells us that our peak level the highest level it got was minus 1.9 true peak was minus 1.9 the integrated loudness which is good for youtube so you know how loud you're actually being we were at minus 21.8 lufs yes i know i'm demoing our door but i'm on mac os it all works the same though okay guys but our integrated loudest was minus 21.8 lufs and our loudness range was 6.0 so there's this idea that you should be around minus 14 on youtube it it doesn't matter if you're too loud youtube will turn you down is all that that's really about but it gives you a good idea if you are recording too hot or not loud enough if you're seeing you know your uh lufs way down like minus 40 <laughs> you're too, way too low okay so that's a good thing this is the mp3 it'll also show you the wave and they're a little different see our peak was at minus 2.0 on the wave file on the mp3 it's minus 1.9 our overall integrated loudness is minus 14.4 lufs for our wave file and our mp3 is minus 21.8 that's just part of the compression algorithm of mp3 Okay, or any of the lossy codecs such as OOG or Vorbis or um, MP3 or AAC. They, they have little quirks like that. So you can play the file back. And from here, if you wanted to hear it, um, you can also just close this and make sure that if you're going to use our door on Windows or Mac or even Linux or FreeBSD, make a donation because... These guys are awesome. Um, I'm just personally, I am a a Logic guy. I use Logic, Reaper, and Studio One. That's just me because I use Max as my recording software. I wanted to make this video so you would understand how to basically find your way around our door. I'm going to put some links in the description below of guys who their channel is based around our door or they do really good our door tutorials. And that you may learn some new information from like automation i'll do another video on how to do automation automation is the, one of the most handy things you will ever learn in the daw world because basically with automation you can come in here and turn down any part or turn up any part of the audio file you want to you can also you can also go in and um, automate the plugins to work so if you need a little more compression for like 30 seconds in a certain part you can set the compressor to compress more or if you need like say you had to change microphones in the middle of of you know a recording session for some reason your microphone dies you could kind of eq the the track to have to make them sort of sound the same with automation so you wouldn't have to have two separate tracks with a bunch of plugins on you just automate the plugins to do exactly what you want to do it's awesome and it's really handy to have when you're working in our door or any daw but for now this should get you started and i will to keep this video short to get you started this is how you record into our door and i'll do a couple videos this week i'll set me up a linux machine so i can kind of show the open source community how this works in open source and uh i'm going to work on uh, probably a well let's go with the latest version of our door i will use arch linux probably manjaro or garuda and i will show you how to set up our door on linux machine and how to get that going but you can demo our door now and that's you know and you won't see this nag screen that i'm seeing on mac os on linux or on FreeBSD. you just won't this is the thing you see on the proprietary operating system such as windows and mac os but uh I hope this helped you out. If it did, thumbs up. If you've got any questions, ask me down in the comments. I'll be right here to help you. I'll answer as soon as I possibly can or as soon as I see it. 
All right, guys and gals, we'll see you next time. Have a great day, y'all.